Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today for our uh, webinar on women empowerment in the 21st century at Brescia. We're going to do a brief introduction. So my name is Kate McBain, and I'm an admissions and recruitment officer at Brescia University College. I assist applicants with the last names M through Z. Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Ume Fendi and I'm also an admissions and recruitment officer and I assess student files with the last name starting with A through L. We have left a link in the chat to our web form. So if you would like to be informed uh, via email to any of our upcoming events or uh, to receive our view book, please fill out that form. As well, there is the Q&A box. So please reach out to us if you have any questions throughout this webinar. Uh, we would love to connect with you and answer your questions. Um, and also our emails listed on the screen. So you can definitely reach out to us via email as well. So today we're gonna discuss women empowerment and there's no better way to delve into this topic than by speaking about Brescia and our history. So here's a little bit of what we're gonna touch on today. So we'll do a short introduction about Russia, our location and our affiliation, Russia's history, Russia today, the importance of diversity, why you should consider a women's university, our Russia bold and our competencies, and how students expand their experiences, which is uh, our residence and leadership opportunities. And finally, we will touch on programs and scholarships and how to apply. So I'm just wondering how many of you have heard about Brescia before. Um, and if you have not, we are a little bit uh, different or distinct. So one distinguishing factor is that we are Canada's only women's university. We were founded in 1919 by the Ursuline Sisters of Chatham. And we will talk a bit more about this with our rich history. Brescia's first graduating class was in 1923 with seven students. And now we have a current student population of 1600 students. We are a close-knit community and we really provide the opportunity to connect with your peers as well as your professors. Russia is located in London, Ontario. London is a mid-sized city um, and it's a very student-friendly city. So there's always something happening in the city of London from festivals in Victoria Park to sporting events to concerts. There's tons of local restaurants that feature cultural foods from around the world. And London is nicknamed the Forest City due to our many parks and walking trails. We're actually only a two hour drive from Toronto and about 40 minutes to an hour from different beaches. Um, at Russia, we are an affiliate of Western University. So both Russia and Western are located in London, Ontario and Russia is only a five minute walk uh, from Western. So if you look in our uh, right hand corner at the top, there's a little bit of a map there. It's just down the hill, five minute walk. Uh, this means that Russia students actually graduate with a Western University degree and have access to facilities, resources, and student services and supports um, at Western. Russia students can also join Western extracurriculars such as clubs, sports, events, and programming. And we do actually have quite a number of varsity athletes at Russia. Students get a Western student card and a bus pass. And there's actually a shuttle bus that uh, goes all the way through campus to easily uh, get to main campus Western and the other affiliates. So students can take classes at all of the campuses um, and easily get around onto campus. I'm now going to pass it over to Ume for information about our history of over 100 years. Thanks, Kate. So Russia definitely has a rich history in women leadership and empowerment. Angela Marici, with her companions, founded the Order of St. Uh, Ursula, those whom we call the Ursuline Sisters. It was their groundbreaking work that led to the establishment of Russia University College in 1919. At that time, the, there were very few women that were seeking education, but the demand was definitely growing. And the Ursulines are recognized for their experience in women educa women's education and uh, were eager to expand their horizons to include university education. An affiliation what agreement was shaped from the beginning with Western University that allowed Russia to register women as students uh, who could eventually receive a degree upon graduation. We just want to take a quick moment to share a video about their experience and how women empowerment led to the founding of Russia. Michael Fallon called us to serve 
and give women the opportunity they always deserve. The courageous spirit of St. Angela Marici, we said, we will do this. We will get ourselves trained, and we will do something only men have done before us. A century strong and counting, Russia continues to empower women's leadership locally and around the world. With 100 years behind us, we, the Ursuline sisters, are proud of the legacy we built. And know oh, this is only the beginning. Wow, that's uh, really inspiring and even so more in inspiring because Russia still stands strong with Ursuline Sisters' mission by providing a student-centered education to its bold students. As you can see on the screen, Russia was located uh, in a converted house downtown near Victoria Park. And within uh, the first few years, Russia expanded. Students, faculty, and staff relocate were relocated to what is now known as uh, Ursuline Hall, which is right across uh, Western University. This move was in 1925 and it was just the beginning of a growing university. And to celebrate uh, the, uh, the platforms for women uh, with leadership opportunities, continuous learning, in September 2019, Russia opened a new $14 million uh, building uh, now called the Academic Pavilion. Uh, at, on the screen, you can see some pictures. Uh, so the academic pavilion has three contemporary uh, food and science labs, uh, sensory and research labs, uh, classrooms, and lots of community uh, gathering space. So for the remainder of uh, this webinar, uh, we will focus on how Russia is continuously creating platforms for women to lead and be bold. Historically, uh, Russia's primary focus was on, on the liberal arts and specifically uh, languages and history and religion courses. However, with the needs of the society changes, uh, Russia is continually sp continuously pivoting to ensure our students can meet these needs and be strong, bold leaders. Later uh, in this webinar, we will also cover our unique programs uh, offered at Russia. Uh, next, we want to take a moment and highlight uh, what empower empowerment means to us. What does bold mean to you? Confident. Courageous. Brave. Russia. Russia University College. Not like any other school. It's different. A good different. Different as in distinct. As in just better. As in Canada's only women's university. You want to change the world? You want to define leadership? Join us at Brescia and go bold. And just to add uh, a little more to that video, uh, since the beginning, diversity and inclusion uh, have always been embraced at Russia. Uh, students have always felt welcomed uh, from all around the world, specifically from uh, Caribbean, Latin America, and Asia. Uh, today, the university continues to celebrate a diverse campus as 13% of Russia's full-time students come from across uh, 36 uh, countries around the world. Our international students always find that their culture and faith uh, are respected. And Russia hosts events for our international students to create a space of inclusivity and a uh, chance for all of us to learn and educate ourselves about different cultures as well as different backgrounds, religious backgrounds. Uh, uh, in our next slide, uh, Kate is going to tell us a little bit more about why you should join a women's only university. Thanks, Ume. So women's universities like Brescia focus on building meaningful connections with and between our students, and we commit to a student-centered approach above all else. Research indicates that when undergraduate students feel valued and competent, they are more likely to persist with their studies and graduate with their intended degree. In 2020, most Canadian undergraduate students were women. And despite the growing number of women learners, it is often still unconventional to talk about women's leadership or study how women learn. 
Russia students see and experience women's leadership every day, whether it's our all women cabinet, our community mentors and partners, or predominantly female faculty and staff. Research indicates that when undergraduate students are introduced to successful women role models, they are more likely to feel they belong in their field of study and more likely to succeed in their chosen career. Women universities further empower students by encouraging self-exploration and a commitment to social justice. We know that students learn more deeply when they feel personally connected to course content. Universities like Brescia research how women learn and use that knowledge to influence how we teach. Women universities also recognize that education is far more extensive than what happens outside of the classroom. 81% of college, uh, women's college and university graduates report that their institution was extremely or very effective in preparing them for future jobs, as well as 87% of women's college and university's alumni were more likely to graduate in four years or less compared to 54% of public university alumni. And 50%, 51% who attended women's colleges and universities completed graduate degrees versus 27% of public universities alumni. So just to reiterate some of that information, women's education can be considered collaborative. We learn best when we consider knowledge from all perspectives. It can be considered holistic. We want to look at the whole person when we consider how to educate them best. Inclusive to the experience that each learner comes to class with and critical and applicable so that the information can be learned and applied to the real world. And lastly, engaging. We want each student to feel their participation is needed and leave the classroom with more things to consider. One of the ways we do this is our Brescia Bold curriculum. So we recently uh, in 2019 introduced a required first year course for all incoming students called our Brescia Bold. It's an interdisciplinary study on living well, learning deeply and leading to serve others. It introduces topics like what is a good life, living your values, understanding how the world works with attention to information literacy and the ethics of the digital world and exploring agents of change. This course taught by Brescia's president and associate academic dean unpacks how to thrive and contribute to positive change in our world. Students practice the Brescia competencies and skills that support their university learning while exploring the questions of community and identity. Brescia's bold course is considered a high impact educational practice, which is a type of learning experience known to support student success. While other universities offer high impact education, Brescia's bold is unique among first year seminars because it is designed with women learners in mind. This means students have meaningful discussions with diverse classmates where they will learn to work as a team, not just a group. And conversations center on important real world issues and above all, we know that what our students do outside of their studies is important and the course allows them the opportunity to tell their personal story. I'm now going to show a video on our Brescia competencies, which are woven into the Brescia Bold curriculum and all courses of Brescia. Sorry, just one second. Let's be honest. Choosing a university is hard. You're probably considering going to university in hopes to prepare yourself for the rest of your life, but you're really not sure how to get there. Let's break it down a bit. Do you want to graduate with more than just a degree? Do you want to stand out from the crowd? Let us introduce you to the Brescia competency. What is a competency? It's the ability to do something successfully or efficiently. But what is a Brescia competency? One of seven critical skills and abilities which make up the foundation of your Brescia experience and are the building blocks for your future. Brescia's competencies are the same values, skills, and abilities that your future employers and grad schools are looking for, setting you up for lifelong success. How will you learn these competencies. The road to mastering our competencies begins right in the Brescia classroom. For example, when you're doing a group presentation, you're actually practicing your critical thinking, research, and communication skills. But what makes Brescia competencies different is that they focus on you as a whole person. The competencies are thoughtfully woven into your entire Brescia experience joining a club or out on practicum placement, you're getting a meaningful chance to practice the competencies in real world settings. At Brescia, we 
we are focused on you and your future. We are committed to your success and have always put our students first. Our competencies are at the heart of all we do and are part of Brescia's promise to create tomorrow's bold leaders like you. So, you want to prepare yourself for the rest of your life? The rest of your life starts here. So just like the video stated, um, these competencies are woven into every single course we offer. And regardless of what degree you choose, these skills, values, and abilities prepare you to lead with wisdom, justice, and compassion. And these are exactly what employees are looking for, um, and they will make you stand out from the crowd. Ume is now going to highlight our offered programs. Thanks, Kate. So uh, research has shown that women learn differently than men. And at Russia, the professors will tailor their programs and courses for our female learners. So here's a snapshot of uh, programs that are offered at Russia. Uh, our programs do require students to have a minimum average of 80%. Uh, for our health science and kinesiology, we ask students to have an at least 85% minimum average. Each program has a unique set of prerequisites. Um, uh, and for all the programs that you see on screen, uh, English for You is one common prerequisite that uh, is needed for uh, the program. Uh, the first three programs that you see on screen, so starting with social sciences, arts and humanities, uh, family studies, and human development, these three programs will give you a little bit of more flexibility in your first year. So what that means is uh, you have lots of options to take different courses, uh, see what interests you, see what's... Um, uh, see what you find a little more difficult, and uh, by the end of your first year, you're able to declare your major. Uh, I also want to highlight our foods and nutrition program. So Brescia is one of three Ontario universities that offers an accredited nutrition degree program. So what that means is uh, once you graduate with this program, you can uh, go to become a registered, registered dietitian in Canada. Uh, our health science and kinesiology program is a Bachelor of Arts uh, and is, a, is offered with a partnership through Western University. Uh, these are majors that uh, students can pair with another program uh, at Russia. Uh, some additional unique programs to us are also um, uh, family studies program and our French for teaching. So these are great options for students who are interested in pursuing a career in teaching and uh, will be guaranteed a pathway into Western's uh, Faculty of Education program. For our business, we offer some unique streams such as food, uh, food management, uh, consumer, consumer behavior, which is like marketing, uh, and nonprofit management. Uh, we also have a preliminary year program, which is basically a foundational uh, year uh, equivalent to grade 12. So you can take this before you start your undergrad studies. Uh, at Brescia, learning happens uh, not only inside, but also outside of classroom uh, with lots of experiential learning opportunities and leadership involvement. Uh, students can get the experience needed for their career goals. In the next few slides, we will touch on some of these opportunities. So through uh, Brescia's B International program, students can study for a full term or a full year in, uh, in places like Netherlands, uh, France, England, Japan, Ireland, or Barbados. Uh, you'll earn credits that count towards your degree while enriching your university experience. And if you uh, don't want to go for a whole year or a semester, we also have some courses which have travel experiences as part of your curriculum. So for our foods and nutrition uh, or nutrition and families course, uh, students uh, can travel to Japan during the reading week uh, to see uh, and learn all about nutrition and food in Japan. Uh, we also have our French program to where students can go to study the south of France uh, during uh, reading week. 
So no matter what you're interested in, there's uh, lots of opportunities for you to be involved. Uh, and to top it all off, Brusha has a co-curricular record. So that, that basically means that it's a transcript of your extracurricular uh, activities that you're involved in outside your classroom. Uh, and as mentioned earlier in this webinar, uh, we are affiliated with Western. So if you're interested in a club or a sports team, you're not just limited to Brusha, but you can uh, even join uh, Western or other affiliates. Again, uh, Brusha uh, at Brusha, we want students to succeed, and there's lots of opportunities for you throughout your degree program from the Student Life Center. So, and starting from day one, uh, where we have our orientation week, uh, you meet with your soft uh, peer mentors who will help and help you transition into your into university life. Uh, uh, we have our own orientation. However, uh, as a Brusha student, you can also get involved with Western's um, orientation week. Uh, we have uh, career and professional development as well. So our team can meet with you and help you determine career paths that are best suited for your experience, um, uh, your programs, and your interests. And we value wellness at Russia very much. So next, Kate will discuss uh, some of our uh, wellness options at on campus. Great, thanks, Ume. Um, so supporting student success is at the heart of all that happens within the Russia community. So some of the examples on the screen, we have our care program, which was introduced actually pretty recently. Um, and it works through our community looking out for each other and identifying any concerning behavior that may be impacting a student's ability to be successful and safe on the campus. So the CARE program works by receiving concerns from staff, staff and faculty and then working with, uh, with our students to get connected with the appropriate resources. And staff and faculty are actually trained to notice the changes in students and let them know that we've reached out on their behalf for support. The Baines Peer Support Space is a drop-in service focused on peer-to-peer -peer support for students experiencing mild to moderate mental health concerns. It encourages students seeking support to come and speak with thoroughly trained wellness peers who promote mental health, well-being, resilience building, and increasing self-care and self-management strategies. In this room, there's meditation headsets, books, crafts, other resources meant to help students access self-care while on campus. It's also a great uh, opportunity for leadership. So for students that are wanting to work in a wellness uh, space after they graduate, they can get that hands-on peer experience, uh, learning, helping resources for other students. Thriving at Brescia is a collaborative initiative between the Student Life Center and the Registrar's Office. It's an eight week anti-oppressive and holistic uh, program for students to take outside of the classroom to learn all about resilience and how to thrive while being a student. We also offer case management, which is a voluntary service at Brescia. A student will work with the case manager uh, and get support and direction to follow up with referrals and make plans for both their mental health and also their studies. We also have four psychotherapists at Brescia that offer counseling appointments. Uh, and then we do have a therapist who's actually currently offering free same day counseling appointments for students in need, which is just fantastic for students that may be uh, experiencing a very severe mental health crisis. While wellness is a big part of feeling safe and at home on campus, residence is also a big part of this. So we do have Claire Hall at Brescia. Claire Hall opened in 2013 and it's a $31 million facility that was created for students by students. We have an environmental rating of five green globes, which is the highest rating, and it is a modern and bright space with lots of windows and comfortable lounges. So as I mentioned, it was actually created with students in mind. So there was a survey sent to all students uh, to see what they really wanted out of a, res a residence facility. Uh, and what we got is this. So queen size beds in every single room, floor to ceiling closets, a window and a desk, and your own personal sink. We like to call these semi-private rooms as you share a bathroom with only one other person. Private rooms are also available on a first come first serve basis. And there's really great views as well. So even the big window, you can look right out onto the trails right behind Claire Hall. Here's another photo. Uh, as you can see, there's an individual sink for each room and then the shared washroom with a modern shower and a shared toilet. Uh, each floor also has a study room and a lounge and the lounges include fridge, oven and a TV. 
Each floor also has a resident assistant and throughout the building, there are community assistants. The Residence Life team works to create community on campus and throws events each month in the shared spaces. Some examples of this are board games and ice cream Sunday nights or movie nights. Um, there's always tons of creative and sometimes even educational events happening like Black History Month uh, or one of the fun ones that sometimes takes place is Bachelor Nights. <laughs> and your resident assistant is like a big sister on campus. So they are there to connect students with resources and act as a listening ear and promote community. There's also 24 hour on call rotation with the resident assistants. So if there's ever an emergency, they can be called to make referrals. Uh, and then there's also front desk attendance and security. So it's a very safe campus. Guests are also allowed in and uh, can be signed in through the front desk. An important part of residence is the food. So our Mercado has six interactive food station, uh, emphasis on local seasonal produce and an experienced food service team that prepares everything in house. They're extremely accommodating. So if you do have dietary concerns or are even missing a recipe from home, they will include it into the menu if you ask. And they have tons of vegetarian and gluten-free options every day. Um, at each station. And Tim D'Souza is our food service manager and he brings experiences for five-star restaurants in Italy, England, and Toronto. You can actually see some examples of our food right on the screen and it really is food that's not typically found in a university eatery. As a previous student and a vegetarian uh, and now a staff member, the Mercado is still what I look forward to <laughs> on campus every single day. Um, it's just really great to have so many options um, and really fresh food. Ume is now gonna tell you all about how to apply to Brescia. Thanks, Kate. Wow, I, I feel hungry looking at that slide. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, what, uh, as our webinar is coming to an end, we uh, just wanna to touch base on how uh, you can apply to Brescia. So you can apply using the OUAC website, uh, either as a 101 or a 105 applicant. If you are applying as a 101, that means you are a Ontario high school student. The admission averages um, were mentioned earlier in this webinar and they are based on your 6-4-U uh, or M course including prerequisites. If your average is below the requirements, we do have an application profile that you can fill out. Uh, if you are an international or transfer student, uh, there's additional information on our website. Uh, you can also always reach out to Kate or I regarding the admission process. Next, uh, we have our scholarships, uh, which do start from 82% and up with a value of $1,500 all the way to a full academic tuition. These are automatic and renewable as long as you maintain a, a minimum 80% uh, average throughout your degree program. Uh, we do encourage students to maintain their average to 82% uh, and up so that they can use uh, make use of our, our scholarships. Aside from this, we also have automatic awards, uh, which can be stacked with your scholarships. So for instance, if you are um, joining our foods and nutrition program and you have 82% uh, in um, uh, average, so you would be receiving an automatic scholarship of fifteen hundred plus a thousand dollars from uh, uh, the Food Nutrition Award. Uh, aside from this, we also have application-based ba uh, uh, scholarships and awards. So for this, you would have to do a little more work. So in terms of uh, maybe uh, possibly write an essay or provide us with a resume showing that you have been involved in leadership activities and community work. For the application-based scholarship and awards, uh, the deadline is usually close to uh, early May. And uh, a question might still come in your mind uh, in terms of why, uh, even after 100 years, we are still in a women's only setting. Well, it's because it works and uh, we must continue to work hard to maintain the success uh, with generations to come. On screen, you will see some success stories from our graduates. So as you can see, we have Elise, who graduated uh, with a double major in community development and women's studies, and she is now a special assistant in the Prime Minister's office. We have Candice, uh, who graduated with a BSc in Foods and Nutrition, and she is now a Product Development Specialist at Nestle. 
And there's many, many more uh, success stories. Uh, but the important part to note is that students are not limited to these uh, degrees or careers at Russia. We want to make the best version of you and uh, help you succeed in your goals and passions. So Russia's goal was and still is today to help women develop the confidence and capabilities to make positive change in the world. And we want to take this opportunity to invite you to lead with us and to come visit us at um, our campus. So we do have a virtual fall preview day happening on Saturday, November 6th. This is a great option to connect with students, faculty and staff uh, and to ask any questions you may have and get a feel for Russia. Um, and then after that, if you decide you really want to come visit the following weekend, we have campus tour days happening Saturday, November 12th and Sunday, November 13th, all day where you can come visit campus, maybe try some of our food in the Mercado. If you're unavailable those days, we also do have campus tours that happen Monday through Friday at 10.30 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. Um, and it's great options to come visit us uh, at Brescia. And um, we also have some of our information on the screen. So our Instagram is a great way to connect with us over social media. You can see tons of photos of the Russia campus, um, you know, different events happening on campus and different student profiles. Our main uh, recruitment and admissions email is listed on the screen as well, which is buc down at uwo.ca. And if you do apply to Brescia and you want to connect with other potential incoming students, you can join our Brescia Bound 2022 Facebook group uh, for tons of updates on other students and, you know, general questions. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we've left our personal emails up on the screen as well, and we can move into a Q&A period. But we really appreciate you connecting with us. And please don't hesitate to ask a question in the chat portion right now. Uh, Ume and I will also be on all day today uh, at our booth in the Russia section. So if you want to hop on a video call with us personally as well and, and ask any questions, we would love to connect with you. All right, folks, we do have quite a few questions. Um, the first from Anonymous is, do you offer full-time online remote learning? So unfortunately, we don't have uh, full programs that are online um, at this time. We do have, uh, you know, specific courses that can be taken online, but unfortunately, uh, there's no full degree programs that are offered online. Uh, very good, thanks. Um, another question about uh, early admission. Uh, can you explain a little bit about early admission and when does the first wave of offers typically come in? Uh, yeah, so... Um... We do, uh, you can apply as early as now. Um, uh, there is early admission sometimes as early as December and January, uh, but most of our bulk uh, offers do go in March and uh, May. Yeah, as we receive incoming grades, we will uh, provide offers on a rolling basis. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, another question, do you have any knowledge about the EAAA Sexual Assault Resistance Program Initiative? Is this something you're familiar with? Not personally. I don't know too, too much about it. I do know that, uh, you know, throughout Western and Russia's campuses, this is something that, uh, you know, has been heavily considered and worked on. But unfortunately, I don't have any specific information about that. Sure. It seems to be a Carleton University thing. I looked it up briefly. Oh, thanks. Uh, okay. uh, thanks. Uh, how about health science programs and what would the sort of rough admissions average look like for that? So for our health science program, it is partnered with uh, Western University. Uh, we do ask, it's a very competitive program, so we do ask uh, students to have a minimum average of 85%. Uh, and uh, at Russia, we only offer the uh, Bachelor of Arts degree, and it's uh, offered in as a major. Uh, and uh, the program at Russia can be paired with another major at Russia. We've got a question from Heather here. Uh, do you offer any support for single mothers, like a care facility on campus, anything like that? 
Uh, yeah, so we do have, as we said, tons of uh, like scholarships that can be applied for and bursaries. So if financial assistance is something you're looking for, that's definitely an option. In terms of care facility, I do know Western's campus did used to have a daycare. Uh, I don't know whether that's still running in COVID, um, but definitely it is a flexible campus. We do have lots of mature students and lots of students in various uh periods of their life. So it is something that, you know, at a smaller campus, there is the way to kind of work with your professors potentially to have independent arrangements made if you do have certain circumstances. Um, arrange your course schedule around whatever your needs are. And um, the nice thing about being a small campus is it's a lot easier to kind of reach out to resources and support, uh, such as our Hive, which is our, our one-stop shop for student services. So you can always reach out there as well if you ever have, uh, let's say, like accommodations required, anything like that. Fab, thanks very much. And uh, one more, keep the questions coming folks, of course, uh, from Alyssa here. Do you have a required language course? Um, maybe for international students, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, so we do, uh, uh, we do have English for you that is required for all of our courses. Um, and then in terms, if you're an international student or you haven't studied uh, English uh, a, a English curriculum, we do have on our website uh, more details. I think we can send a link right now. Um, yeah, well, while Ume is getting that link, we do have English language proficiency requirements. Uh, so this would be for, for international students that have not studied at least four years at an English speaking institution, um, or they don't have English as their first language. Um, and then we just ask that you take uh, one of the English language proficiency tests to uh, provide to us your scores. Um, and then if for some reason you were too low, we have a number of pathways that are also listed on our website. Um, so if you let's say needed to study at the Western English Language Center um, or, you know, join our preliminary year program and upgrade some of your prerequisite courses, you can take language at the same time. So there are a number of options. If you have any concerns with that, please reach out to us. We'd love to work closely with you to help you find the best option. Yeah, and we've uh, just popped it in the chat so you can take more uh, notes from there. Thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, another question from Anonymous. Do you find most students who receive a scholarship are able to maintain the average to uh, keep it in the next year? Uh, yeah, so it's, as I said, it's a small campus. So the great part about that is, um, you know, it's a lot easier to get into office hours for help if you are struggling with courses. There's tons of uh, accessible resources available. So our library has uh, research help and a writing center. So any of those things that may normally potentially cause a challenge for students once they transition into university. Being a smaller campus, it's very easy to reach out to those resources uh, if you are struggling to keep up your average. Um, and one of the nice things too is when you're studying information that you're interested in, it can really help as well to keep your average up. So typically our students are able to keep their average uh, maintained in the following years to keep getting that entrance scholarship uh, as it renews. Thank you very much. Uh, definitely a, a tough question. Uh, we've got another one from Anonymous here. For first year students, do you have a sense of the class size for something like social science? So um, our typical class size at Russia is uh, approximately like 25 to 30 students. Um, and so, yeah, it's definitely a close knit um, community where you really get to know your professors on a one on one basis. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Kate, if you want to touch base more on this. Yeah, so definitely for like the incoming first year courses where they're a little bit more general before we have a lot more specific courses as you get into your upper years. First year courses do tend to be a little bit larger. So our typical often with social sciences is usually about 60 students. Uh, so the larger our, I think our largest campus space is only 100. Uh, so we do sometimes have courses that are 60 plus uh, in terms of capacity. But uh, as Ume said, it really just depends on um, the course and the year. So going into your upper year, your courses will typically be more on average 30 students. Um, and yeah, so things like psychology, sociology, things like that in first year are a little bit uh, larger, but then courses like English may not be quite as large. So it's just typically because social sciences is one of our larger uh, incoming programs compared to like arts and humanities. 
Hey, thanks very much. I think that's it for questions uh, for now. If folks have more, keep them keep them coming. Well, maybe that's it. Any parting uh, words before we uh, sign off for today? Yeah, yeah just we just, oh, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> no, you can go just, ahead. No, I just wanted to thank everyone and uh, wish you all the best um, as you do begin your admission process. Uh, I know this is stressful, but it will, I'm sure you guys are gonna pick the right program for you. And we're here to answer any questions that, that you have about Russia. Uh, our contact information is also listed here. Uh, I'll pass it over to you, Kate. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say we will be here all day in our booth. So if you do want to stop by, we'd love to connect with you personally. Um, and then we also do have our view book and our website linked on our um, on our page. So if you do want to download any of that additional information and access it later, it is all listed under the Russia University College page. Very much. Uh, here's a little post credits uh, bonus question. Are there any, uh, does Brescia have TAs in addition to uh, profs? So not typically, just because our courses are very small, um, but students can take courses at other campuses. So typically with Western main campus courses, there are usually TAs. Um, but yeah, and typically our Brescia courses don't require it just because they are a lot more smaller, close knit. Thanks very much. Another question from Alyssa. Uh, after the four-year program to become a dietitian, do you uh, have any, is there any sort of internship options or uh, sort of co-op opportunities after the dietitian program? Yeah, so we do. Um, we do have a Master's of Science in Food Nutrition with the internship stream, um, as well as another stream specific to research. So students that study undergraduate can continue on into those. There's also, um, we also have a diploma program as well. So there are quite a few options that Russia has uh, after students complete the four-year Bachelor of Science degree. Um, but you can also go on to do internships at other schools um, or institutions. So there is quite a number of options and that's something you could definitely connect with um, an academic advisor about or your professors while you're studying here to kind of find out what, what stream might be a good option for you. And uh, your courses will also touch on kind of the different opportunities for a foods and nutrition student uh, that you can pursue if you are interested in dietitian uh, and going the clinical route or if you are looking for other opportunities in the field. I'm just popping it in the chat, uh, our graduate options. So if you are interested, you guys can check that out as well. Thanks very much. Uh, we do have another question as well in our final couple of minutes. Uh, you sort of alluded to this, this is from Anonymous. Uh, is there any guidance provided for timetables? Uh, if you're taking social sciences in your first year, can you get help working on your timetable? Yeah, for sure. So um, uh, we have lots of uh, appointments available. So through the admissions uh, office, as well as the Hive, uh, where you can meet with uh, an academic advisor, and we really help you um, transition into the university life, uh, uh, provide like a residency requirements and like, let you know exactly uh, what direction you uh, understand what direction you want to go uh, into and like provide you with options. Um, so there's definitely lots of support. Um, we're not we're not going to leave you high and dry, like make sure that you know what you're doing, uh, what you're getting into, and not just in the beginning, but throughout your degree program, uh, where there is the hive as well as um, academic advisors to help you. Yeah, just to reiterate what Ume said, we do offer summer orientation days, like all summer, where we meet with every single uh, incoming first year student to help them plan their timetable. Uh, so we do connect with you and we provide tons of resources uh, specific to each program. So we very much do uh, help you get into it. And then, as Ume said, lots of opportunity for assistance as you move on into your upper years as well.
Beauty, thanks. Uh, one more question. This should be an easy one. Are office hours available with professors? Yeah, of course. Um, so every single professor will have office hours. Um, one thing that I noticed as a student taking courses at Western compared to uh, Brescia or the other affiliates is it can be a lot easier to get into office hours when it's a smaller campus, uh, just because you're not competing with other students trying to get into the office hours uh, as much. So that definitely helps. And even just having that smaller classroom opportunity to ask your questions directly during the lecture or during the class. Um, so sometimes you don't even need to go to office hours. You can definitely, you know, get some assistance while you're in class. But um, I know that office hours can definitely be helpful if it's a subject that you do require a little bit more assistance with. I know for me, I was not a math student. Uh, my degree was in psychology and math and statistics were not my strong suits. Uh, and I really do owe it to the office hours for helping me succeed in those courses. Uh, great, thank you very much. I think that's all we have time for. Um, yeah, any, any final parting words? No, I think we're good. Thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for presenting. Uh, and thanks, everybody, for attending. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.